And now, it's time to transform your life in 15 minutes. Here's your host, Pia McAdams. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Transform Your Life in 15 Minutes. Again, my name is Pia McAdams. I'm an author. I'm also an accounting professor and a certified life coach. I specialize in personal and small business finance and also fitness. On this live broadcast, this is where we're doing five-minute exercises, one each for the mind, the body, and the soul. All right, so for the mind portion, we're just going to do a little short stimulation, a stimulated conversation. And this month, we are talking about self-discipline. And then for the body portion, we're going to be doing a five-minute yoga routine. And for the soul portion, we will be doing a two-minute meditation. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So for the last couple of days, we have been talking about self-discipline. So if you missed it, my, uh, the broadcast before, you can find them all. They're on my YouTube channel. Just um, search for me, Pia McAdams, and you'll find the previous broadcast. So on Monday, we talked about what self-discipline is. I also mentioned about what happens when there's a lack of self-discipline and then also gave some benefits of self-discipline. And then yesterday, really quickly, we talked about the 10 characteristic of the self-achiever, okay, the role model of the self-achiever. And so today we're going to be talking about the three types of motivation, okay? So three types of motivation, but guess what? The three type of motivations that rarely work, okay? So these are three types of motivations that rarely work. So the first one is what is known as evangelical motivation, okay? So it's evangelical. And what that is, that's like when the, um, when you go hear like a really motivating speaker, you know, he comes to town, you go hear him speak and everyone's all pumped up and motivated, you know, and singing along or uh, rooting along with his slogans. And you go back to work and you're just really pumped up and energized. But after a while, like shortly after a while, that motivation starts to dwindle after the initial peak. All right. So and this happens even if you're like rereading the notes that you took or maybe you purchase some audio and you're listening to it, then you're the, still the motivation starts to wane. Now, the reason why this one doesn't work is because it relies on external stimulus. OK, so it you know, for instance, it just is it's, it's coming from the outside. It's going to be a short term. And with that being said, it's not going to work. It's going to it's going to be like a drug addiction, if you will. So after that initial, you know, with the drug addiction, it relies on initial stim external stimulus or artificial stimulus in order for you to get the same, try to get the same level of motivation. But guess what? It doesn't happen. All right. So that's the first type of motivation is evangelical. Now, the second type of motivation has to do with external rewards. And this is like when you, um, for example, your um, something that you receive from your your boss. All right. And likewise, this one does not work as well because it's again, external stimulation, just like what we just talked about uh, with the evangelical one. But this one depends, uh, ha makes you uh, become like a childlike dependent with short bursts, spurts of uh, motivation, okay? So those two types of motivation, the evangelical and also the external rewards, those are like the stick and carrot approach, right? It's like, oh, come get it, come get it. It's gonna, it's gonna get you motivated and pumped up and energized initially but it's going to wane and shortly afterwards, it's going to wane over time. Now, the third type of motivation is fear. And this is where if you don't perform something undesirable, it's going to happen. For example, you may lose your job or something like that. And as you can imagine, this type of motivation doesn't work. Why? Because over time you start to become angry and start to resent the work that you have to do. And guess what? When you're angry, you're not productive. And when you're not productive, you become fearful. And then you get into this vicious cycle over and over again. All right. So those are the three types of motivation that rarely work. When it, once again, it's the evangelical and then you have the external rewards and then you have the fear. Now, with all three of those, again, it's short term. So initially you're going to get like really pumped motivated. I know, I know you guys experience these, right? So, like, you know, particularly evangelical one, you may see here a motivated speaker and you're like, oh man, I'm so energized. I'm pumped up. I'm ready to get motivated. I'm ready to go get, um, achieve these goals and do this work and blah, blah, blah. And again, like a week or two later, it's like, mm, yeah, I'm back to, you know, you get back into your same rut. So you may be wondering, we we're talking about the three types of motivation that don't work. Well, what does work? Well, the only type of motivation that's guaranteed to work is the motivation that comes from within. Okay, so those three, the reason why they don't work is because it's external, right? But if your motivation is coming from within you, you will sustain it. 
Okay. In other words, it's not enough just to have the map of where you want to go. You also have to have the fuel to get to where you want to go. So the map would be your blueprint, your design, your goals. Okay. You know where it is that you want to achieve, but now you have to have the motivation to sustain you. All right. But that motivation has to come from within. And that's important because I hear a lot of times when people say, oh, if, you know, like, for instance, we, we, we like to use cash as an example. Right. And we talked about external rewards. Well, guess what? Cash is an external reward. And you'd be like, oh, man, if I had that cash, if I was getting that, I would do this. But again, you'll find again, initially you will be motivated, depending on what it is. Right. But initially you will be motivated, but it's not going to be lasting. Remember, I said three types that really, really work. Now, when it comes to the self um, discipline achiever, he or she has a strong a sensory blueprint. And what I'm talking about when I say sensory blueprint, this is important because I mentioned it yesterday, but I didn't get a chance to go into detail. But when we're talking about having a sensory blueprint, because that was one of the characteristics, I'm talking about you can actually visually see your goals. Okay, so the blueprint of your goals, you can actually visually see it. You can actually hear it. You can actually feel it. You can actually taste it. You can actually smell it. So for example, let's say that your goal is to lose weight. Okay. So visualize what it's going to look like. Like what is your body going to look like? You have to visualize this in detail of what it is it's going to look like. All right. And then for instance, once you have that body, where are you going to go? Like, are you going to go to the beach? Well, what are the sounds that you're hearing around you? Is it the sounds of the water? You know, is the sounds of people whistling because you look good in your bikini? All right. And then we talked about feeling like, how does it feel like inside? What are those feelings that you're feeling that you now have this new body? And then also the, like that. Another thing is also, how did your physical body feel? Like, you know, you're not used to, you know, you're used to touching yourself out here. Now you're touching yourself here. Or you're used to putting your hands on your weight out, waist out here. Now you're putting your hands on your waist in here. What does it feel like? And then what is the taste? Like, for instance, what is that you're doing? Like, are you eating something special? Are you eating the salad? Are you still eating ice cream? What is it that you're that you're tasting? And then the smells, what is around you? What is that you're smelling? This is what I'm talking about when I'm saying a sensory, a strong sensory blueprint. You have to have this. And then also you have to have a feedback system, okay, to make sure that you're able to achieve your goals. Now, another thing that this, um, the self-achiever has, the um, self-discipline achiever does is they ask yourself this question. And this brings me to your question for today. Because again, I like to kind of um, end off with something, an activity for you to do. Because again, it's not enough just to hear this stuff, okay? You gotta want to, you gotta participate in it. You gotta again, it's that sensory, you gotta, you gotta do something, some kind of action that you wanna take. So really go inside and ask yourself this question. If you can have anything that you can imagine, okay, anything, what is it that you want? And that's very important because a lot of times people don't even know what it is that they want. Like they think they know, they may just kind of surfacely know, but have you really thought about it? If you could have anything that you could imagine, what is it that you would want? Okay. So think about that, write it down, write it down in your journal, write it down in your notes, but think about that. And then another, the second question is also is what is your purpose? And this is a big one because a lot of people are like, you know what? I don't know what my purpose is. And they're looking for external resources to find that purpose. And what I'm trying to share with you is guess what? It all comes from within. It just requires you to take some time out of your day to be quiet and contemplate on these things. Okay. Meditate on these things, these questions and these, the answers will come to you. Now, initially it's like anything else. When you initially start doing something, yes, it's challenging. Yes, it's hard and you get frustrated. OK, but think about how we've been talking about the things that uh, yesterday I talked about the role models that you had. You had when you were little, like when you're learning to walk. So think back when like children, they're not programmed with this fear. You know, think about when you were a child learning to walk. Think about how relentless you were until you actually achieved that goal of walking. How many times did you fall down? How many times did you hurt yourself? But guess what? How many times did you get back up and try and try and try again to achieve it? Well, the same thing when I'm talking about meditating or finding those answers that are within you. Don't give up. Remember, go back to your childhood and remember the things that you learned as a, a little baby, you know, learning how to talk and learning how to walk and all those things. All right. So hopefully this information was helpful for you. Again, I thank you for taking the time to watch this and make sure you share this um, information also with your family, and your friends, because there's a lot of people out there that are struggling with this with this type of uh, stuff. All right, so this brings us now to our second portion. This is where we're going to be going on. In and remember, when it comes to transforming your life, and I mentioned about doing the, the exercises for the mind, the body, and the soul, when it comes to the body portion, this is where I'm going to ask for your participation. So it's one thing to sit and watch me 
and to do this yoga routine. But it's another thing that if you join me, again, get the body motion moving. I know it's first thing in the morning. It's early. It's early for me. This morning, see, what time did I get up this morning? I got up a little late this morning because I went to bed a little late. I tell you, my sleep has been so erratic. I've been getting up like 3 in the morning, but today I get up at like 4. So I've just been up for about an hour and a half. When I was probably about 2. Yeah, about an hour and a half now, 4.30. Yeah, about an hour and a half that I've been up. But I'm pumped and I'm motivated and I look forward to doing these live broadcasts. Again, I want to thank you guys. And I don't just say that light. Like you hear people saying, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. But I seriously mean that because what, I don't know if I, I actually have told you guys, but if you haven't watched, you don't know this. But you're my accountability. I work from home um, for the most part. I mean, I do have some clients I go out to see, but for the most part, I work from home. So I don't have to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning or 4 o'clock in the morning or whatever time I get up in the morning. I, I set my schedule, right? But I get up because I want to get up because I know that successful people get up in the morning because that's the best time to work. Even though my house is empty like pretty much all day, I feel I, I, it's more it's inspirational for me. It's, it's inspiring. I get really motivated. And I get a lot of work done first thing in the morning. Like for me, my first thing, and again, I want to share this with you because, again, another tool, and I know I'm talking, I do a lot of talking, but there's a lot to share with you guys. And, and I promise my podcast is coming soon. I'm seriously waiting to the second quarter of this year, and there's a reason for that, which I'll talk about in another part, another live. But anyway, um, this, is, this is my motivation. Um, my time for me is first thing in the morning. So just so that you know, like before 10 o'clock is my time schedule. My day for outsiders does not start until 10 o'clock. Okay, so these, and again, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be able to do this, but I'm sharing this with you to let you know that I really do appreciate you um, watching and supporting me. All right, so without further ado, as soon as I get my music up, I think I already have it. Yeah, I do. All right, so go ahead and uh, I didn't mean to put this right here. Wait, hold on a second. I got the speaker and I know this kind of, I could, I could turn it down. I know it's kind of loud. All right, but go ahead and meet me on the mat. So then, always before we get started, go ahead and take your three deep Ujjayi breaths to get yourself centered, ground, and aligned. Also, set your intention on what it is that you want to accomplish for this next five minutes. And while you're doing that, I'll just go ahead and just kind of do some movement. Just kind of feel what's going on inside of me right now. Any strange stress, tension. As I feel inside, I'm just kind of getting in tune, in tune with that right now. All right, let's go ahead and come to tabletop. This is where your palms are directly underneath your shoulders and your knees are directly underneath your hips. Your head is in the natural extension of your spine, which by the way, is in a neutral position, which means that you're not rounded or arched, and of course, you're not hyperextended, okay? So just a nice neutral spine. From here, we're gonna take a nice deep breath, inhaling through the nose. And as we exhale, you're going to drop your chin down to your chest and you're going to round through the spine, touch your tailbone under, press those shoulder blades down and away from your ears. As we inhale, your head and chest comes forward, you're going to arch your back. And then as you exhale, round through the spine, touch your tailbone under. Again, cat cow, as you know, is one of my favorite things to do, that's why I do it most mornings. For this yoga routine because it feels good it's a great way to loosen up the spine limber up the core and again of course it just feels good all right one more time nice deep breath inhaling through your nose this time as you exhale we're going to turn back to the neutral spine we're going to go into a balancing pose so go ahead and find your focal point right in front of you and on the next exhale i want you to extend that right arm and left leg so just think in terms of one nice long line extending from the fingertips all the way down to the toes. Belly button in toward the spine, stabilize your core, and again, focus point. Just find one spot in the center of the mat or the floor, and then just focus on that point. That will help with your balance. If you are losing balance, feel free to lower your, your hand or your arm and or your leg. Okay, that will help you with your balance. Really relax that shoulder. And then release. And on the exhale again, opposite side. Again, right fingers, left leg, press the shoulder blades down, breathe, and release. And exhale. And 
and then go ahead and release it down. This time on your next exhalation, we're going to curl those toes under. We're going to take it to downward facing dog. All the way to Kasa Vasana. Now just start to pedal your legs. Again, just do what feels comfortable. Try to loosen up those hamstrings. Press your chest toward your thighs and your knees. Down to facing forward. Your head is in alignment with your bicep. Let's go ahead and take a nice deep breath as you inhale. We're going to put up on the top of your toes. And as we exhale, roll down to the balls of your feet, all the way down toward your heels. And let's do that again. As you inhale, come up on the top of your toes. And as you exhale, roll down to the balls of your feet, all the way down to your heels. And one more time, as you inhale, come up on the top of your toes. This time, I want you to lean your hips over to the right, bring that right knee in toward the left. Get a nice gentle stretch on that right side. Or I should say that left side. My right. All right, return back to the center and then release it all the way down. We're going to do the same thing. This time we're going to lean the hips over toward the opposite side. The left knee goes over toward the right. Get a nice gentle stretch on that right side. All right, return back to the center, and then slowly release it down. Keeping your palms down flat, let's go ahead and walk our feet in slowly toward your palms. If you need to, bend your knees, just keep your palms down flat. When your toes reach to the top of your, to the tip of your palm, I want you to slowly round yourself up. Take it in one vertebrae at a time. Just make sure that your head is the last to rise. Let's come to Tadasana, which is mountain pose. So your feet are stable. You pretend like there's like um, roots coming from the bottom of your feet all the way down to the middle earth. Your chest is lifted. Your head is a natural extension of the spine. Pretend like there is a nice string attached to the uh, crown of your head and it's going all the way up toward the ceiling. As we inhale, we're going to take the arms up overhead. And as we exhale, we're going to swan dive the body forward. Take your time and use your breath. And as we inhale, we're going to lift up halfway, flatten out the back. Arch your, toe, or arch your back, flatten out your back, and then tailbone sticks out to the back of the room. As we exhale, we're going to take the palms down flat toward the mat, and we're going to step back right, left into the plank. As you continue exhaling, you're going to release your knees into your chest and your chin. As you inhale, you're going to take it up to the cobra. Relax the shoulders, take them down away from your back or your ears. And then we're going to curl the toes under and exhale the downward facing dog. Couple breaths here. And on the next exhalation, we're going to bring that right foot in toward the fingertips, turn that left foot in perpendicular, and take it all the way up. Okay? So now in this position, you have that right heel that's dissecting the arch of the left foot, and your feet about three distance, three feet apart. And you're going to extend the arms nice and long. Again, squeeze those shoulder blades in toward the spine. Now you're looking over that right, uh, the right fingers, and you're pressing your hip out. So as you exhale, I want you to lean all the way forward as far as you can. Then I want you to take that right fingertips down toward the shin, and the left arm goes up. This is Trigonopsa or Triangle Pose. Now feel free to stay here if you need to. Again, some of you may be here, or if you can, you're taking it all the way down. And then your glazes follow your thumb. If it's too much strain and stress, feel free to look forward or to look down. Now in this pose right here, it's very important to know or to Pretend like you have two glass planes. You have one in front of you and one behind you. And it is your job to keep those planes smear free, which means your chest is not sticking out and your butt is not sticking out. Okay, so see, this is not the right position. This is. Okay, so pretend like there's two glass planes that are closely by your body, one in front of you and one behind. All right, let's go ahead. Bring the palm down. And then forward fold here into the pyramid, just kind of relax and breathe. And as you're using your breath, you know, there's a tight area, like for me, it's right here, my hamstring, so it's tight. So as I use my breath, I'm going to direct my breath to the tight area. Slightly lift your kneecap to engage the hamstring, give a deeper stretch on that, quad, on that, um, on the lift the quad. Deeper stretch on the hamstring. All right, now go ahead and bend that right knee, place those palms down flat, Take it back to the plank, knee, chest, chin, or Chaturanga Dandasana. And then go the cobra or upper facing dog. 
and then curl the toes under to downward facing dog. Now remember, downward facing dog is a resting position, so we're resting while we're here. If you need to modify, go to tabletop, or you can also go down to child's pose. If you are resting, come back up to downward facing dog, because on the next exhalation, we're going to be bringing that left foot towards the fingertips, right foot comes in, and we're going to take it all the way up. And this time, extending, taking the hips, going all the way forward as far as you can. This time, the left hand goes toward the shin, right arm goes up. Now remember, this modification, if you're here, this is fine. You can be here, here. If you have a block, you have the block here that will help you out as well. Or if you can, take it all the way down. But again, don't go down if you're out of alignment. Okay, so this is out of alignment. This is in alignment. Lift up the torso, lift up the chest. Relax the shoulders. Glaze is up, forward, or down. On the next exhalation, bring the fingertips down towards the mat. Lift the kneecaps and engage your quadriceps. We will be for stretching the hamstring. Direct the breath to that tight area. And just surrender as you exhale on each of the breaths. Now go ahead and bend the knee. Take the palms down flat. Again, take it back to the plank. Knee, chest, chin, or Chaturanga Dandasana. Cobra, or upward facing dog. And then downward facing dog as you exhale. Now this time you're gonna walk your feet in one more time toward the palms. But this time we're gonna take our palms and we're gonna clasp the outer edges of our elbows and forward fold. You can use Nasana here but with the clasped hands. Let the crown of your head bring your body weight naturally forward. As you're breathing, on the exhale, just kind of surrender. Okay, let the chest fall just a little closer to those thighs and knees. Micro bend on those knees. Again, modify if you need to. And sway your body side to side. You know, in all ways, just do what feels comfortable to you. Using your breath. All right, go ahead and return back to center. Release the fingertips. Take them down, just kind of forward fold here in the Utanasana for just a moment here. And breathe. Now I want you to slowly round yourself up. Again, take that one vertebrae at a time. With the head being the last to rise. Draw your shoulders down and back. Inhale, take the arms up overhead. Exhale, slowing dive your body forward. This time we're going to place the palms down flat as we walk our feet out to a heel to the edge of the mat and then release the tailbone down toward the mat. Using your elbows to push out on those inner thighs, bring your palms together at the heart center. Bow your head down into the lasana and go ahead and extend some gratitude. Then release the palms down to the mat, take them behind you and then slowly start to transition yourself into a comfortable seated position facing to the front. Make sure that you're on your sits bones and not the fleshy part of your bottom. Take a nice deep breath, fingertips go up toward the sky. And as we exhale, release them all the way down. One more time, take a nice deep breath, inhaling. And exhaling. On this final time, we're gonna bring in all of that positive energy, just scoop it all in. This time we're gonna greet the palms together at the very top. As we exhale, you're gonna bring your palms down to the heart center, and we say, Namaste. All right, thank you for taking the time to practice this yoga with me. This brings us to the third and final exercise of the day. And this is where we're gonna be doing a two minute meditation exercise. So what you're gonna be doing is for the next two minutes, you're going to breathe normally, and you're going to count your exhales, okay, at any time starting with number one, and at any time you come distracted with either outside noises or internal noises known as thoughts, what are you going to do? You're going to first acknowledge the distraction, then you're going to bring your focus back to your breath and continue counting, but start all over again with the count of one, all right? So over time, what you're going to find is that your subconscious mind is going to get tired of starting all over, and then it'll stay, keep its concentration, okay? So that's the premise behind this, and it really does work. So I invite you to do this at least another time today, okay? So this is just two minutes. 
that I'm doing this morning, but find some time in your day today and just set your watch for like two minutes and practice this again. Remember, yoga and meditation is a practice. Matter of fact, life, okay? Life is not a, it's not a practice. You only get one shot at it, okay? So you can try the practice, but I want to do the performance, okay? And hopefully you do as well. All right, so before we get started, let's go ahead and take our, or set your intention of what it is you want to accomplish, okay? And a good intention would be to uh, keep your focus your, on your breath for the next two minutes. Now let's go ahead and take a nice deep three deep breaths, inhaling through your nose, and exhaling through your mouth. Again, nice deep breath, inhaling through your nose, and exhaling through your mouth. And one more time, nice deep breath, inhaling through your nose. And this time as you exhale, go ahead and close your eyes and begin your counting. go ahead and release, relax, return, refresh, and calm. You've done something good for yourself today. Thank you for taking the time to meditate with me, and also thank you for taking your time to watch this transform yourself in 15 minutes. Guys, again, please ask you to share this information with your family and your friends, and I really do appreciate you doing that. And for your word for today is motivation. We talked about the three types that rarely work, but I want you to find the motivation that comes from within. So be motivated about life. Be motivated about yourself. Be motivated about your day. And I will see you the same time tomorrow. Bye.